Uh, thank you so much for joining us, Internet World. And we have some lovely, lovely VIPs in the house. We got James and Sarah. Woo! 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 Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, as always, we have the lovely Ben on sound. And we have Chris here and the beautiful Claudia. We're missing our interns and good old Brenda. We may miss you. But we do have our good friends, Austin Eastsiders, here to support us lubricantly. He's got one coming. I, I'm drinking water. Server. <laughs> Matcha comes in with a beer strapped to her. Chief of <laughs> Security. Um, would you like to introduce our guest this evening? I would love to. Our guest this evening is Brandon Ludke. Come on, give it up music firsthand. This is a we song know you're about applauding at home. <laughs> <laughs> we can hear you. This is a song about racehorses. Run, Molly, run. Run, oh, Molly, run. Tenbrook's gone beach hills, bright and shining sun. Bright and shining sun, Lord, bright and shining sun. Well, Tenbrook's was a big bay horse, wore that shaggy mane. Run all around Memphis, and he beat the Memphis train. Tenbrook's skipping and gone away, Tenbrook's skipping and gone. Well, out in California. Molly, did I ask you please? Came back to old Kentucky. God, be with all ease. Be with all ease, Lord. Be with all ease. Our Kuiper, our Kuiper, not riding him right. Give Tim Brooks the bridle. Let old Tim Brooks fly. Let old Tim Brooks fly, Lord. Let old Tim Brooks fly. Molly, run, run, oh Molly, run. Tim Brooks gonna beat you, the bright and shining sun. Bright and shining sun, Lord, bright and shining sun. Bright and shining sun, Lord, bright and shining sun. Thank you, studio audience, for giving it up for Brandon Lucky. Thanks for joining us here. Um, we would first like uh, to tell the Facebook group, everybody who's watching, please comment with your questions, your inquiries, maybe just nice things to say about our hair. They pop up right on our phone, so we... Mm -hmm. 21st century digital interview. That's how we like to socialize these days. Type it out. Uh, thank you so much. That opening song was great. Racehorses? Uh, Racehorses, actually, yeah. The, the Kentucky Derby of like 18... 97, I think, was the year. Mullington Very specific. Yeah. Why Been Why that one? While. Um, why what? Why Why that particular year? Ooh. Um, that's, when <coughs> they, that's, that's when those two horses were racing. And apparently, you know, one just lost, but somebody lost a lot of money. And so the song eventually became that the other horse died. And, it be, and it's, you know, the, the loss. Because of the victory of the other, it killed the other horses. Is basically mm. that song. Wait, the loser lost? Wait. The loser That's always how? loses, you know. I mean, the, <laughs> the loser, loser died. died. The losing yeah, horse well, but that's not what actually happened in the oh. Kentucky Derby. But that's what the legend became. <laughs> oh, okay. they just pretended. Um, yeah. <laughs> they made that whole first thing. That oh no, that's just rude. They shame killed someone. That's it hard. Is, yeah, it's like cyberbullying of the Kentucky Derby. Yeah, yeah. it is. Yeah. That's rude. It's already rough enough to have lost. <laughs> <laughs> it's already abuse. Standard abuse. Um, what were the horses' names? Yeah. they always have such great names. I need um, that. Molly and Tin Brooks. Oh, but it was actually T O E N Brooks, and I don't know if how they said it, but you know, you know oh, okay. that's that's how we say it now. And Molly had a have pee. Like, weird sentences for names. And right. Stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine being Molly? Just Molly. Molly, yeah. That was the early days before <laughs> all the... Before you could... Yeah, now yeah. if the horse was named Molly, it'd just be sleeping. Yeah. And turning up. No, <laughs> no. That's different <laughs> crap. Uh, you started uh, singing and writing and playing guitar at 12, right? Yeah. I, uh, when I first got my guitar, um, it was actually the same... Th the only time that I went to the principal's office <laughs> in, in elementary school. And, but uh, So my parents were really mad. My dad pretending it was for stupid reasons, you know. But then at the very end of that night, he, he was like, don't tell your mom I gave you this, but, you know, 
I, I didn't want to wait. <laughs> I didn't want to wait, and uh, I didn't have anywhere to put it. A garage in Texas will kill your guitar. You need that enough stuff. That's true. It's like its own coffin. So yeah, that's when I, when I started playing. Basically. If you do, you have any like, if you could go tell your twelve-year-old self something, like to, if you could give yourself advice about the music industry at twelve, what would you tell yourself? Um, just you know, don't. Don't listen to Green Day and Blink-182 for the next three <laughs> years. <laughs> just skip that whole phase. Just, just, yeah, you don't need that for three years. Do you still remember the first song you wrote? Um, I remember, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, I think The Man in the Moon was what, was the name of it. I don't remember how to play it, but uh, yeah, I think that's the earliest one I can remember. Was it like a sad one? Did you make like a pa- like a no, power ballad? Pretty, I feel like it was, I was trying to be real like motivational back then, you know, because I would yeah. be sad about something, and then I would have a realization, and then I would try to like save it in that way. I didn't have a laptop, so. I would <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone remember singing the Man on the Moon song? His name was Ake and Drum, and he was made out of food. Just me. Just That's the one. I, I wrote oh. that one. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> I'm just that kidding. Was yeah. Him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This whole time. I just had a memory come back to me. Like, wait, wasn't there a man on the moon made of food? Like, that's a real song. Ask, uh, I think so, yeah. Comment on Facebook <laughs> if you remember. Then tell me I'm not crazy. Made I'm of cheese, sure it right? Yeah, well, I remember just... singing it. We would go around and every part was made of a different food, and you'd take turns and mm. name a food. Like, mm. his mm. eyes were made of peanuts, of peanuts. That was you? Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. That's a good yeah. one. Yeah. It's a little huge part of my childhood. (laughs) 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 Uh, I guess I don't know. Like growing up in, did you grow up in Dallas or did you move to the? It was a suburb. Um, Well, so I was. My mom wanted me to be born on Texas soil, and then we (laughs) moved to Nebraska like a month after. And I lived there, you know. For, yeah. Did she start having labor pains in Nebraska? I'm like, we got to get, right? Now! <laughs> well, like when she, she was here and those started. But, uh, yeah, we came back after a few of those Nebraska winters when I was in kindergarten, basically, and lived here. It was in a suburb outside of Dallas. So everybody in Dallas, you know, it's just like Dallas, but it's also the only Metroplex, I think, that exists. So everybody just wants to pretend like they're actually from Dallas proper because you can lose track of all the suburbs around there. Mm-hmm. So. Because it's called Dallas proper. No. Yeah, <laughs> that's proper Dallas. Fancy. We're, I was from Rockwall. It's named after a rock wall. <laughs> 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 they were like, it's named after a rock wall or whatever, but they just spelled it. No, it's uh, just a rock wall. They found a wall made out of rocks underground, and that was what they stuck with, you know, for the title. So anyway. <laughs> Would it be cool to say you grew up in Dallas improper? I would yeah. say Dallas and proper would be I more appropriate. Yeah. yeah, I like I like that. You, yeah, you yeah. don't have to credit me for it. I, I, I will. This don't, time. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Um, I recently saw that you played a farmer's market mm-hmm. in that June. Was, yeah, I, I played a I li- Okay, so if I could make a Tinder profile, I would be like, yeah, I'm a musician, and I play at farmer's markets, and I have <laughs> 10 dogs. So unless you have 10 dogs, <laughs> like, I don't know. That seems to be like... Those are like the two places you right. Like if I'm thinking mm-hmm. like a cliche douche, like I could like I could pretend I cook things and go to the farmers market and look for hot chicks that do cook yeah. things, and they can cook for me. Or just like chip, I feel like, it, did you did did you find playing in a farmers market? You just like felt did a bunch of ladies come up to you and like offer them their baskets of oddly <laughs> shaped fruits because I that would be. A, what else do you do at a farmer's market? That sounds like a metaphor, first of all. Yeah. It uh, is. <laughs> it clearly is. Yeah. But what I was it like? offered tons of fruits. Dumb. Yeah. What do you have, farmer's market, yeah. if you don't bribe <laughs> musicians? Fruits and vegetables. Was it was it just hot and terrible or like really awesome? It was all right. Uh, I was all in the shade and Leander, and that was the first farmer's market I've ever been to. So, yeah. <laughs> See, right. You and I didn't, come you know, these things. yeah, exactly. <laughs> anyway. Come here often? I enjoyed no. it, though, you know. I enjoyed playing there. Lots of people looking at vegetables and smiling. <laughs> Someone's like, oh, there's a background music today. That's not just like kids screaming and dogs peeing yeah. out of the back <laughs> of my legs. That's fine. Uh, I also saw on your uh, like your Facebook cover profile now is like a bunch of like terrifying prayer candles with like Steve Buscemi. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Are those <laughs> yours? No, I uh, no, I would never pay money for that. Like, <laughs> I feel like somebody. There's a, there's a couple did. stores that carry them. I forget. I think they are made locally, but yeah, it's like any celebrity artist. I have, I have a Blanche weird? Devereaux one <gasps> on my desk at work. Yeah. Oh. Which one do you have? Blanche Devereaux. Yeah. Yeah. Ms. Not Blanche. that I need to invoke her at work very much, but, you know. I mean, when you need to. I mean, you don't have to light it. It's like a threat. 
Like I if guess. you leave it on your desk. I don't I don't know how the magic works. Maybe I should <laughs> light it and see what don't happens. Don't make me light my Blanche Devereaux yeah. on your ass. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. I guess I just wanted to know if you had any like weird collections of anything. Like um, I feel like everybody collects something maybe <sighs> kind of weird. I, I actually have a stamp collection now, but it wasn't really on purpose. It's not like I started collecting stamps. I just uh, I used to work at a place numbers. right by a, a post office, and so I'd get bored and go in there and check out the new stamps. <laughs> <laughs> this, ha- this happened for uh, a few months. Anyway. Did you hear the post office is getting sued for their Statue of Liberty stamp? Is that what? true? Because Damn. they accidentally used uh, the image of the Statue of Liberty that's in Vegas instead of the one that's in New York. <laughs> And no. the Vegas Statue of Liberty is a copyrighted work of art. Oh, so it was like somebody already painted it's that Vegas. She one. looks different. The sta- the Vegas Statue of Liberty is like poutier and sexier. <laughs> Bigger <laughs> boobs. Yeah. And there's more legs showing. Yeah. yeah. And for a small fee. And I say mm-hmm. no. Uh, that yeah. Was so <laughs> I like someone at the pop post office was like, no, use the hot Statue of Liberty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's bad. Yeah. Do you want to play us another song? Sure. Cool beans. It's called Waiting by the Light of the Moon. I'll be waiting by the light of the moon. I know the sight of you will be here soon. Till then, I'll catch up on sleep, cause my eyes and count sheep keep waiting by the light of the moon. Know you're gone and know you'll be back soon. You'll arrive just like a monsoon. Through the tides ever flowing, my boat I will row. Be waiting by the light of the moon. Looking for you, I don't know what to do. You got me spinning in circles, and that's true. So I will cast away trying to forget the days I kept waiting by the light of the moon. Be waiting by the light of the moon. I know the sight of you will be here soon. Till then I'll catch up on sleep, close my eyes and count sheep. Keep waiting by the light of the moon. Sharpened harpoon. I'll probably be harbored here until noon. Then I will cast away, try and forget the days I kept waiting by the light of the moon. I'll be waiting by the light of the moon. I know the sight of you will be here soon. Till then I'll catch up on sleep. Close my eyes and count sheep Keep waiting by the light of the moon I always try to clap with microphone in hand. I probably just end up pissing Ben off. I'm just like knocking. <laughs> beep, 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 beep. <laughs> uh, when, when did you write that song? What is that? Let me think. Um, that one's on uh, my record I have out now, which is just now about a year old. So that was probably a mm, year and a half ago, I would say now. Yeah, just, just a country song. Yeah. Just, a cu- song. <laughs> just a country love song. Yeah, just a little ditty I did, you just know. Just a little ditty I did. I uh, did you you <laughs> used to like work with a lot of bands, and now yeah. you've gone solo recently. But do you still like dabble in playing guitar for other people? And yeah, and I, uh, that's always fun. And, uh, you know, I still play with, you know, friends in uh, a band called Honey Baby um, that w- will appear on some pills randomly in town. Uh, if you if you get lucky enough to see it, catch it. But anyway, um, 
Yeah, I uh, I mainly I've always been playing like solo, but it just I guess gaining more confidence to just do that uh, after playing with other people for so long. And you're just chilling. I mean, like, is there like a huge difference in your sort of creative process when you work with yourself as opposed to working with other groups? Or not really. Uh, yeah, I kind of started off. I basically did this because I would go see those punk shows I was talking to you about uh, <laughs> with my brother. And I realized, you know, like some sometimes every now and then the guy would come in with a, an acoustic guitar. So I figured, like, worst comes to worst ever, he has that, you know, whereas the bassist and these other bands, I don't know, you, you can't be so lucky in other p- positions. So I just wanted to be self sustainable. So you picked guitar for the opportunities in career. Uh, exactly, exactly. <laughs> exactly. I, I figured this will be a good financial decision. <laughs> yeah, for me. Like, that's why we chose, Smart, like, yeah. theater and comedy. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're all making our parents proud. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do, you, do your parents, like, musical? Did you grow up doing it? Uh, n- no. Not your dad was all. just like, this is the punishment thing. I don't know what the guitar is, but I know I can maybe focus your energy on this. <laughs> you just knew I wanted one. My brother was in a band, my older brother, and I looked up to him, and so... Yeah, he just got a guitar because he w- he had drums. So, are you competitive with your brother? You're like, I'm gonna be in a better band. Um, <laughs> or you not the about same that, because he kind of stopped being in a band. Because right you after. were better. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm kicking he your could, ass. Right. We had one sibling rivalry thing where uh, he started working at Hobby Lobby, so I started working at Bed Bath and Beyond <laughs> the same summer. And That's why you stopped listening to punk music. Yeah. yeah, it was a few months later, but Hobby Lobby closed down, so I, sp- I feel like I. I won that one. Yeah. You might, yeah, you beat him on that that one. (laughs) Also, Hobby Lobby, Bed Bath, Beyond. Exactly. You can get crafts, you can get crafts, and all that weird shit you see on TV. Yeah, they didn't want to limit themselves. No. They weren't sure where they wanted to go, so they just, we'll just put a Beyond on there. Yeah, Yeah. and then they made the ceilings really high, so you can just literally be go, like, they're like, screw this whole eye level shit, we're going straight up. Now you have to look literally beyond (laughs) every time. Yeah, Yeah, you have to call someone with a ladder to get... Some of this yeah, and then you yeah. have to take a nap on their pre-made beds, and then they get really mad about that. I yeah. remember, uh, maybe this isn't an interesting story. <laughs> I remember when I had to go buy a new mattress, and I had just gotten laid off, and I was about to move to Austin. I was at a low point, and the, I went super early in the morning to buy my new mattress, and the mattress store was closed for another hour. <laughs> but Bed Bath & Beyond was open, yeah. and so I went in there as the only customer at like 8 o'clock in the morning <laughs> and just sat in the massage chair for an hour. <laughs> yeah. I mean, why not? And every now and then an employee was like, do you need help with anything? Like, why? Like, nothing you can help me with. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it's buying your time. Good therapist yeah. that's free, like sitting in this damn massage chair. Yeah. Back off, Cindy. I'm busy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, well, that's pretty much the only thing I've ever done there. Um, you just played a John Prine... Like tribute show? Tri- yeah, it's it like was a tribute, um, tribute show for uh, Thread Gills. For yeah, and a bunch of our alumni were in it, like yeah, Daisy yeah. O'Connor and a couple. I literally a blanking. That was the one that was on um, top of my head. But what was that like? What it was great. Um, you know, he's it made you realize how many great songs John Prine has. But yeah, it's great artist, local p- doing it. You know, it was a pleasure to do that. An honor to be asked to. And uh, I don't know. I mean, everybody had one. One guitar and one song, and so there's a lot of turnover of waiting, but uh, like maybe that like helped the anticipation. Bee. Yeah, <laughs> sort of, I guess. Yeah, yeah. There's some people who got. Song I played yeah. "Please Don't Bury Me," but um, my first couple choices were taken, so <laughs> I got. In Did you like know beforehand, or was it like a trial by like I think they're singing my song? Shit. <laughs> no, <laughs> we we yeah we talked me. it all out, planned it before, like who had which song, so <laughs> that wouldn't happen because that would be pretty bad. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it'd be everybody playing Angel from Montgomery. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that was cute. No. Yeah, they're finishing each other's and we get it. You both <laughs> play music. Woo. <laughs> Do we don't have any we still don't have any Facebook fan questions. Facebook. What's the matter with y'all? Please type away if you want to come and join us. Don't be afraid that if it's like a stupid question. I mean Most you heard my bed bath and beyond story. We we'll talk We all about just whatever. need a massage sometimes. Yeah. It's, it's okay. This is what music first hand does. It's like mild therapy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh how would you describe like going to one of your shows? Like, like what what do you like performance wise on stage? What do you want your audience to see? I don't know. I've always kind of been more like the songs and Im- more important than what I'm saying. So I just hope those come across. <laughs> but like I've started also realizing um, how much talking you can do and get away with, and people love to hear that <laughs> that too. It's you true. know, like, um, 
Yeah. That's what we do. Most here. comedians are just lazy musicians. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. Exactly. It just uh, depends on the day, you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all the inner turmoil without any of the musical ability. Yeah. That's pretty much all. Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> no, I mean, what no, y'all do is way crazier. Y'all are like, I can't like make a song out of it. So yeah. <laughs> this you need Y'all are tightrope walkers. Like that's insane to me. To, I have to. I can sit behind this. You know, like it's true. Hiding yeah. behind the instrument is. In some of our deal. setups, we have a table in front of us, which oh, makes yeah. us feel like it. news anchors. Yeah. 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 I like it also because I feel like if I have a fat dance on that big of a deal, I'm not like on camera. Like welcome to music for Santa. I haven't breathed in thirty seconds. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I guess. Well, do you have like a pet? peeve or something like what's the worst possible thing that can happen to you at a show in general oh um that's hard to say uh let me think mine's a woo girl every time i get a woo like in, i'm like fine with Ill -timed. the woo girl. uh i'm fine with that now you woo know like, yeah woo is okay woo girls come on you know woo it's get a safe woo place on. yeah it's a safe woo but uh uh, yeah, I've never been heckled, so that's good. Um, I'm yeah, I don't really have any pet peeves. I guess I'm pretty easy. That's yeah, lucky yeah. you've never been heckled. Yeah. <laughs> Shit. Yeah. What? Oh well. Yeah. Okay. So you clearly are the better brother in a band. That's why. Hoblob. <laughs> Hoblobby was heckling, and that's why he's out of music now. That's probably why. That's probably it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure what you were getting at. With I was trying to <laughs> tease the better brother. He's okay, that was yeah. a, it was a callback. It was a shitty one. I'm sorry. I was like, uh, <laughs> it came full circle there. What's <laughs> happening? Yeah. It, what are you doing when you're not writing or performing or going to go see other music in town? Um, working, you know, I want a few jobs. And also, I record other people, too. There's this, uh, it's like an app called Itty Ditty um, and a website. And it's based out of Denver. But it's uh, for people who want to record but don't want to run into mics and stuff, you know, and uh, I, I get it myself. It's not fun to do that, you know. <laughs> so anyway, it's just like recording demos for older people or like, or people whose parents want them to be Disney stars. And no. Kind of no. Are those amazing? Um, they're they're all nice. They're all very nice people. Oh, I wanted one that was like, <laughs> <laughs> a 12 year old showed up drunk on Four Loco and I don't know what the hell to do. Well, they're also her. your clients, yeah. so you probably. True. We'll just like Tell change us some your voice. Stories after the show. Yeah. <laughs> that's why you should come to our, yeah, <laughs> our studio right. shows. You buy an event, bright ticket. We can talk a bunch of shit on other people's jobs. That's okay. uh, it'll be. It's. I mean, what do, what does anybody else do when they get together with each other? Um. So if you could, oh, I just lost completely lost. I was gonna say you were talking about your itty ditty app. If you could create an app for <sighs> Austin musicians. Oh. Or just in general, what would you make app wise? You got really excited, and then I said Austin musicians. I, were like, I had an answer for a second. Um, uh, for Austin musicians and app, I don't know. Um, I mean, I, I'll think about that one. I've always had an idea of like a Google Maps. This is my app idea, <laughs> other app idea, but it wouldn't make any money because there's no money in it. But just like a history uh, of places. It isn't like the guy who made Flappy Bird like set for retirement. Uh, that's just right. Don't I think that was making never it. say something yeah. won't make money. All right. Yeah. <laughs> It's like uh, it'd be like the Google Maps, but uh, with the history of every building that's you know like so you could see what that used to be and that used to be, oh, especially that's downtown. Cool. I then you don't have to play like didn't that place used to be the Quickie yeah. Piggy? Yeah. yeah, that'd be really nifty in Austin. Too, it would be because you know, few, yeah, I think old this will be a restaurant buildings. in like ten minutes. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Well, how old <laughs> are you? I feel like this here. is the only thing my parents and their friends talk about. Like that's what old, like my people over like fifty do now is like talk about the weather and like did you know that that place used to be a seven? <laughs> yeah, and you'd always have something to say to those people. It's yeah, like, actually, like, it wasn't. You know, correction, <laughs> Cheryl. It <laughs> used to be a twenty-four hour fitness. Yeah. Boom. I'm like, oh, she starts crying. <laughs> Fights break out from your app. <laughs> yeah. God. Uh, before we go, do two more songs. Do you want to do your fun new amazing segment? My segment. All right. Uh, my segment that I don't have a name for it. I call it Claude Asks Questions. <laughs> I like that. Um, so you are credited as being a Texas troubadour. <laughs> yes. People have said that, so I guess it's true. Yeah. So um, I, the, 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 well, I guess it's true that I've been credited with that. And I don't know <laughs> what that would mean. Well, as you know, the troubadours uh, are of a poet, poetic and musical tradition originating in the defunct medieval region of Occitania. As Tr everyone yeah, knows. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to ask you some troubadour trivia. Okay. Uh, <laughs> All right. This, yeah. <laughs> this is going to go real well. Yeah. I can tell. <laughs> uh, first question. A female troubadour is called a A, troubaritz, B, troubarista, or C, <laughs> witch? Um, 
Uh, d- I mean, can't be C, right? And barista, it sounds like a funny joke, so I'm going to say A. I'm going to say it A. It is A. So True barista. Nice deductive Thank skills. You. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> a um, witch! It's <laughs> a witch! <laughs> uh, when uh, noted troubadour Richard I of England mm, married yes. his wife Berengaria of Navarre in the year 1191. Sounds made up. It's true. Now, the troubadours were known for being very romantic. They wrote a lot of love songs. When Richard I married Ber- Berengaria, whatever her name was, in 1191, where did, he immediate, <laughs> where did he immediately take her? A, a good old-fashioned burning at the stake. Oh. B, the Crusades. <laughs> romantic. Or C, a lovely villa in the south of France. Um, not C, but even though that's the only place, you know, I'll go with A. Is that what happened? The c- B. Ah, okay, he took okay. her to the Crusades. <laughs> oh, on, honey, so it's like stuff. the Olympics. She you know? is known <laughs> as the only queen of England to never set foot in England. Oh, wow. Because her Cause she husband died in took the Crusades? her. T- no, uh, he took her to the Crusades, and then she was like, "This is bullshit. I'm out of here." And she. Yeah. Um, and then he died in the Crusades while she was on her way. They think she might have ended up back in. I don't know. It was. It sounds the like the worst the 12th century. It was terrible, yeah. Who? Yeah, let's go. Like Probably one of the better honeymoons at the time. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. There's a new <laughs> Netflix show called Dark Tourism. They just go to like war-torn places. He's that guy. Those are like reenact. I watched about They're five. They're reenactments? Th- that's like five. I, I watched about live. five minutes yeah. of it, and it was like yeah. reenactments, it seemed like. This is this wedding. Yeah, yeah. don't. I mean, try. Sorry, Netflix. Dark we'll take the try, sponsorship if you're giving it. Um, and don't visit the Crusades if you have the option. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I would not. Away but the troubadours were like super into the Crusades. I were was they? Re- yeah, like they like to write love poems and kill foreigners. I don't really. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. You know, 12th century. It was a <laughs> lousy time to be a person. <laughs> uh, all right, my last <laughs> troubadour question: Bertrand de Born, a troubadour. Old birdie, is yeah. what I call him. Yeah. Yeah, in the troubadour circles. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, then you probably know that. <laughs> He was immortalized by Dante's Inferno as being in hell. What was his punishment in hell? Was it A, holding his severed head like a lantern, B, being buried up to his neck with an itchy nose, or C, having to research troubadour facts on the internet? I think it was A. <laughs> it was A. Uh, it was. Nice. He had to carry his head, Can I get a prize? and he, <laughs> he popped out and said, Woe's me! That's a direct quote from Dante's Inferno. Yeah. Just, Woe's me. It's very like fun house. <laughs> then there was like canned laughter in the background. <laughs> 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 like, toss it down, it rolls over. My head was unattached when it said woe is me. Is that what you're saying? What? Was he holding his unattached head? Yeah, and the yeah. unattached oh, head. Oh, nice. Like, Woe's me. Spooky. Yeah. 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 But I don't bump, bump, I can't do the Seinfeld music, <laughs> but I was yeah. trying to do that. But <laughs> but then, I don't know. We might get sued. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. Damn you. Uh, who would you like Some to suits do? just come in and flip our tables. Like, this is not what's what there's a no. <laughs> the one time we're not at like a bar, like <laughs> just like the storms and Chris's head. No, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> would you like to do two more songs for us? Please? Yes, sure. Bring it out. Give you know, a little round of applause for Brandon Ludke. All right. Thank you.
Good things are gonna happen Or I'm gonna die trying Soon as I strike gold It's gonna be a flood in mine Soon as I start living Gonna be drinking the brine When I walk in the rain Family and friends were by my side When I walk in the rain Thank you. All right. Another one? I didn't do the uh, can't get away from the way the world went. I don't think. Yeah, I don't think so. I kind of forget. This is one of my... This is one of the songs I'm proudest of writing. I feel like one day... Well, the plan was to get Randy Travis to cover it, but then he started ending up drunk in the middle of Texas and uh, naked on the side of the road. And I think he might still be doing that. <laughs> <laughs> it happened like three or four times. Like it's like he Randy Travis arrested again. He was naked. Yeah, he was drunk. He was walking around. Yeah. I know, uh, but you know, as, as soon as he gets his fill of all that, I hope he, you know, try to make this work. Can't get away from the way of the world Can't get away from the way of the world Give that girl your furthest twirl But you can't get away from the way of the world I went down to the desert alone I slept in the sand with my head on a stone Woke to a buzzard buzzing around Looking to lift the dead from the ground I decided I'd look alive If I did one cartwheel, I did five Landed with my hand on a rattlesnake curled Cause I couldn't get away from the way of the world Can't get away from the way of the world I can't get away from the way of the world Try and disappear like a peppermint swirl But you can't get away from the way of the world I stood high on an overlook, tall, saw rocks, mud, sand, and dust all form a wall. Carried my gaze to a cactus on the ground. Stone crumbling down made the whole canyon sound. Quartering out, then everything went black. I figured I should start making my way back. Drove dead ahead to where the highway unfurled, but I couldn't get away from the way of the world. Can't get away from the way of the world. Can't get away from the way of the world. Try and disappear like a peppermint swirl, but you can't get away from the way of the world. I went to space in a UFO, didn't have any other place to go. Struggled to sleep and stay in one place while floating in the middle of outer space. Found some hope in a bluish star Didn't even have to look that far Headed that way the whole universe twirled But I couldn't get away from the way of the world Can't get away from the way of the world I can't get away from the way of the world Give that girl your furthest twirl But you can't get away from the way of the world Can't get away from the way of the world I can't get away from the way of the world Chase that rabbit, chase that squirrel, but you can't get away from the way of the world. Interesting song. Um, I might be reading too much into it. Maybe it's the Randy Travis misadventures <laughs> that preceded it, but it sounds like someone who is trying to escape some type of destructive behavior and they just can't. But oh. the melody is so happy. It's so, yeah, it's a sad song, but it sounds so happy. Though. Yeah. Yeah. I threw it in the outer space first. Um, that one, I don't know. Well, your theory is an, a new one and I think it applies. Oh, okay. Yeah, that works. What is there like a real? What, what, what no, it's just a guy like and then stupid like he just does a cartwheel in his hands 
Well, ends up on a rattlesnake, you know, like <laughs> stupid jokes, you know, it's like a guy, <laughs> basically. See, he's, he's trying to take our game I mean, yeah, to write y- jokes y- yeah, yeah. <laughs> into songs. Yeah, yeah. You'll be laughing when we're writing songs that have jokes. That's a thing already, damn it, songs that yeah, have jokes. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. Piss! And yeah. it's not great. <laughs> no, yeah. no, it rarely is. Uh, yeah. mm. What, if you, okay, I asked this question last week and I was actually really surprised by how quick Aaron McDonald answered it. But if you could get away with no like pressure writing, <laughs> no, it was just so funny because I was like, I feel like this is a question that I would. I mean, everybody wants, everybody knows what their guilty pleasure is. Like, if you could make a different style of music with guilt free, what would be the, your guilty pleasure style of music you would try to make? Um, I might do it very soon, but just straight, just country, just like sounds like whiskeys every, like all <laughs> falling all over the place and just very tight band. Um, yeah, I don't know. I love George Strait. Anyway, <laughs> I try that, <laughs> but, I'll, but uh, I don't just know. Th- no, yeah, I like that. You, you just be like that. full on country. Just commit to the bit. Just like, yeah, just radio country. It wasn't as good of an answer as stoner metal, but stoner I'll take metal's it. Stoner metal is better, yeah. Honestly, I just got that image in my head of him doing it with his like sweet little Johnny Cash tattoo. No, it was mm. interesting. What's the <laughs> least cool music that you yeah. still genuinely enjoy? <laughs> uh, ragtime music. I hear people don't like that anymore. <laughs> what? But what? Well, wait. Like, is that like the WB frog? That like. That's what I think of when I think. Hello, of my darling. Yeah. Hello, my. T- not, that rag not time? that. No, just like piano rags, like Scott Joplin, um, like the Entertainer, like. Da, 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 oh, okay, da, da. yeah. yeah, yeah. <gasps> like saloon pianos. Saloon pianos. There we go. That's a good way saloon to put it. Yeah. Yeah. For, the p- for the layman. Yeah. I just really like the outfits the ladies that laid on the pianos got to wear. Mm. Yeah. Hello, my ragtime gal is one That's of the lyrics in that. There we go. Yeah. yeah I, hate I was that trying to think, song. why did we think that was ragtime? <laughs> yeah, no. They say it in there. Yeah, it's not yeah they're fault. singing about one. Uh, uh, ragtime gal. Stupid little frog. Yeah. Poor yeah. thing. Man, what a specific reference to the WV frog. I, he has a name. Kids watching us on Facebook have no idea what we're talking about. I know. We're ancient now. Yeah. We're old. Yeah. I was teaching kids camp, and they didn't know what um, Mean Girls. Like, they were like, Mean Girls is an old movie. <gasps> and I was like, it turned 10. Okay? It's 10 years old. It turned 10 five years ago. Yeah. I feel like it's a Oh, cool no. I years. am old. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh. God, I hope you can edit this and just having like a... Z- this is the moment where my brain bum, falls out of bum, my face. Bum. <laughs> I find a wrinkle in the next one. Uh, what do you? What is your opinion on keeping social media, pr- keeping a social media presence as an artist? Um, that it seems like it's an obligation nowadays, yeah. and uh, that's uh, no, that's not why I got into this so long ago. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's kind of uh, I don't know. I mean. Yeah, it's it can be good when it's good when it all works out the way it's supposed to, but it's also an anxiety to me because I hate doing that. It feels know. competitive. It is. It's like a um, you're just trying to be seen more than somebody right. else. Right, and it's um, yeah, it's also just like just patting yourself on, on the back as publicly as possible. And also, <laughs> all all social media is like a privately owned company, so you're. In doing that, you're also like playing into someone's. Yeah, you're making like Facebook doesn't make its own content. You know, it's like we yeah. give them everything. You know that just they a bunch of nerds who had no friends who just make people get together and mm-hmm. force each other. So to they be friends make money off of other people making friends. Yeah, and that's what it is. This well, is like what we're on wanting Facebook. to make friends. <laughs> we love yeah, you on Facebook Live. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the the fluffiest, weirdest, like most vanilla. Grandma's on the internet version of like Columbine kids getting back at bullies. Like, I'll show them. They yeah. have to be my friend now when I own the company. <laughs> like, <laughs> 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 this is not good. Um. Oh, be nice to kids in school, kids. <laughs> that's all. That's the only thing I'm gonna say. Uh, you also did like the. Uh, I know we're t- we have to backtrack a little bit, but the John Prine show was for Ham, right? Yes, it was. And we had like also. I don't know if the the Indiegogo is still up. Or whatever, but Sydney Wright, one of our alumni, is recently in need. She had an accident. She doesn't need help. So maybe you did up your page. I don't know if Chris can post that. I think it's still up. Pretty Ham sure. Ham is, is Health Assistance for Austin Musicians. Yes. Health, yeah. Alliance? Uh, Health Alliance. Health Alliance. H A A M. How yeah. important is that to you and, like, to I guess, like, uh, a, a community, I guess? It's know? a great program that we have here. Um, yeah. Uh, I'm actually not on it right now. <laughs> so, <laughs> so as I was walking away, this sh- this lady handed me her card and was like, "You really need to get on this." Yeah, and I agreed. But um, anyway, um, it's worked in the past, it. you know, well when I've needed it. I've also fortunately had good health and uh, different healthcare. But it's 
speaking of, is there another cider in there? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Come on, Ben. Do I, something. I want them to make a ham for comedians, and they could call it hack. Hack? <laughs> also, I'm sorry. Just for the joke, you know? What's the C in the just K? Well, it would just be a... For Help, Austin uh, whatever, okay. for Austin comedians. What's going on with Louis C.K.? I, I was going to ask y'all's world. Uh, there's more going on there this than, just than changed the folk song really quickly. world. You know, I, think like he's, uh, I think he's hiding from the world right now. Right. He should be. What about he has a, millions and millions Aziz, of dollars. He's going to be is fine. He, is he hiding as well? Uh, yeah, just like if you get in trouble, yeah, like just stay. Yeah, there's some weird stuff <laughs> like going what, on. You, know, you can't get away with that. Also, I would just like to point out that Ben gets shocked every time he stands up out of this chair. I don't know what's happening. It's a grounding problem. I'm using quotes because I don't really know what that <laughs> means. But it's a grounding problem, I guess. And he keeps getting shocked. But he just got electrocuted to get you <laughs> that cider. Yeah. <laughs> All the Thank things you. we do uh, for our musicians here. <laughs> uh, it's not really like a segment, but I was going to do, like, a, usually I have my mom writing questions, but my mom hasn't been answering my phone calls. Sorry, <laughs> I'm broke, mom. But uh, I've just kind of doctored some of her old ones. Usually she sends me questions because I'm bad at my job and she has questions like why didn't you ask this and they're <laughs> I know she's not watching because she's not talking to me and they're not usually that creative they're very mommy but I love them and they're, they're <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna get away with it tonight Call me, ghost me like you you're my mother okay so these are some Linda questions they're just rapid fire randomness they're not very exciting so feel free to okay, so pep them up like uh, you're gonna pep uh, it up okay, for your okay, mom gotcha. like maybe not the lies I have to tell her about money or whatever, but right. it would just be, you know, like, oh, I'm having a great time. I met a very nice guy. Okay. <laughs> uh, what's the weirdest show you ever had? Um, oh. Uh, I mean, it was weird, but it was, it was great. I was uh, out in the middle of the country in uh, Madison County, Arkansas, and so it was just like a lot of moonshine. For some reason, people showed up in old Cadillacs at like four in the morning, <laughs> like with white wall tires and Casual. they'd built us a stage, uh, like out of like seriously, like they built a deck for us to play and um, there's no cell phone reception out there at all, you know. Um, so I was kind of just rolling with it. I tried moonshine for the first time in my life and last time <laughs> in my life. <laughs> and, uh, Never again. Yeah. It was weird but great. I don't know. You're like, I don't have cell service. If these four Cadillacs at four in the morning are going to show up, I have no one to call. Yeah. Well, well the next question was your favorite venue. Favorite venue. <laughs> was that your outdoor Cadillac experience? Uh, um, no. your favorite venue? <laughs> that was, yeah. Uh, that was cool. I don't even know how I'd find it again. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> I love the buzz mill, but I, I guess they're not doing his music as much anymore. So I'll say uh, Hole in the Wall and... It was an honor, and it was awesome, and the sound is great at the Cactus Cafe playing it recently. Yeah. Bless the cactus. Um, how has your sound developed since, what, Man on the Moon? That was your first song? Oh. Uh, Good old uh, peanut uh, ears, peanut nose? Wh whatever food you want it to be, that's the point. You take Oh, turns. now yeah. I get Let's it. Let's just finish this off Sorry. by <laughs> taking turns singing Aiken drum. <laughs> 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 yeah, how has your sound developed in th since your career, like, would you say it's become like more vulnerable, more honest? Um, I don't know. I don't know. I I've started pulling from a lot more, you know, a lot of different genres, a lot, uh, a lot of things entirely. I found inspiration in and been drawing off that. Whereas then I didn't like even really know how to play guitar. <laughs> if I made up something that uh, sounded cool for a second, like I think this was. I thought that was, I thought that was really pretty when I was thirteen. <laughs> so I think there was a song with that in there the whole time. And uh, anyway, so I've gotten better at guitar for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and um, yeah, I started pulling from like roots music traditions and like other songwriters because I actually learned who they were. Whereas I was just like totally, you know, tabula rasa, m making up weird things that I thought belonged in a song and didn't. Some of them. So Trial and error. I, 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 yeah. <laughs> Yeah, learned more of what I was doing for sure. Fair. <laughs> yeah. uh, who's the most? Uh, who's the an artist that you listen to that everyone would be the most shocked to hear that you listen to? Um, maybe Pavement. I don't know. Aw, classic. Ben's over here like emo sigh. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. No, that's a good one. I would say that. I don't love them shocking. so much. Yeah. Anyway. Well, yeah. yeah love. It. Gotta love. Show out to the Pavement. Um, and the last one is. I just like this one because you were talking about him getting arrested naked somewhere. Like, uh, what would be <laughs> what would be like your not you getting arrested? Yeah, yeah. yeah like if you had a terrible, <laughs> if you had like a terrible, like if all of a sudden you got a bad reputation, like what would it be for? Like, what would you? 
Like I get drunk and run away from bars and leave my friends' places and <laughs> run up at pizza places. Like yeah, that's sometimes I just have to leave. Like I just, just a bolt. Like if bolter. you see me on the way, I'll just be like, I gotta go home. And <laughs> I just so maybe that just ghosting, but like a uh, very very I've got a severe ghosting problem. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, like sometimes you just gotta go. Oh no, there he goes again. I don't like saying goodbyes too, you know. So yeah, no, it gets weird. And you get stuck. The old yeah. French exit. Yeah. Yep. yep. I'm a I big thought fan. That was an Irish goodbye. Or was it? Wait, French. Are I've heard. What's I've the heard French both. exit. Yeah, I've heard both. I, um, I assume they're the same thing. French exit was the first one I heard, so I call it a French exit. Also, my name's Claude, so maybe it's like. Cultural or something. Yeah, Becky <laughs> Joe Neal. I'm like, yeah. come over here, like, yeah, you throw um, a cigarette, you shake a shot of whiskey, and you run out the bar. That's an Irish goodbye. <laughs> That's it. Preferably, you hit someone with said cigarette. I just thought it was leaving without telling anyone. Uh, yeah, I was just being dramatic. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I thought, like, oh, maybe there is a difference. Cause <laughs> That's <laughs> what the difference is. French people are nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, no. <laughs> That's mm-hmm. never been the stereotype. But They've been <laughs> extra. No. Well, you know. Um, would you like to maybe give us one more song before we head on out of here? Uh, sure. Sweet. This is a song about unrequited love. I was at home feeling sick. Watching television, uh, some James Bond movie, I don't know, uh, wasn't a good one. And I've never been a big fan of the uh, the whole James Bond thing to begin with. And, but I turned up the channel and... Uh, I don't know what that movie was. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I saw... I saw... Uh, yeah. I saw... But I saw, you know, in her sparkly dress on the next channel, Vanna White. Uh, season something 34 or 85 opener... And uh, I was like, oh, yeah, I loved her as a kid. Anyway, everybody loves Van White. So this is called the Van White Blues. I got lost at the beginning of a tale by Ian Fleming. I was a step or two behind that black bow tie. So I went up a couple channels. I said, panels and wood shop flannels. Wheel of Fortune spun me in, then sucked me dry. There it goes for one more round. Feels like that buzzer won't ever sound. Till it stops, you won't have to mind our P's and Q's. But I'll need Vanna White to reveal to me what I think we knew. Vanna, won't you tap away my blue? Then comes in normal crew, fast food sports and macro brew. Some quirky humor to remind me that we're friends. I guess there's room for you and me in that spot on daytime TV. But I'd love to buy a vowel when this commercial ends. There it goes for one more round. There's clapping and a hummer in the background. Till it stops, we won't have a thing we have to choose. But I'll need Vanilla to reveal to me what I think I knew. Oh, Vanna, won't you tap away my blue? Vanna, won't you tap away my blue? Keep it going for Brandon Ledke. Uh, We'd like to thank you so much for joining us this evening. It was lovely. Thanks again to Austin East Ciders for our beautiful sponsorship and the Ciders, Sister Ciders. ciders. Um, Chris and Claudia, our incredible team here at Music First Hand. Yeah, thank you. Ben pushing buttons and making dials and shocking himself. <laughs> 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 and James and Sarah, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Woohoo! And thank you to our patrons. Uh, we are interviewing Texas KGB next week at the Velveeta Room. Woo, 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 woo. When we have ticket information on our Facebook page. When you come and see us live, you get uh, five minutes of my stand-up comedy. Stay with me. You also get 
extra music performed by your fav- favorite musicians live. It's going to sound so much better than it does on your laptop. So you should get tickets to come see us at the Velveeta Room next week. And um, thank you to Becky Jo Neal. Oh, my God, thank you. Thank you so much for Claude Ramey. What are you doing this week? Oh, yeah, that. Um, I'm hosting my weekly show, Gut Busters. It's every Thursday at 8 at Hops and Grain. We have an amazing lineup every week because I pick them myself. And uh, you should be there. Cool. My name is Becky Janiel. Come see me at Esther's Follies anytime. And give it up again, once and ladies again, ladies and gentlemen, for Brendan Lutke. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Facebook. I just want to say thank you, Mood. Like it's top, no, 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 no Project Runway people. When Ooh, it's been a while. Food.